Today, we are gonna wrap up our pruning for 2021 with fig trees. That's up next. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to you here today. It is February 7th, 2021. We're here, it's a beautiful Sunday afternoon. It's about 70 degrees out here today, hence the shorts and the short sleeve. And what that means for us is we have to wrap up pruning and that's actually what we're gonna be accomplishing today. So we have a lot of different varieties of fruit here on the farm from stone fruit to citrus to mulberries to grapevines and then of course figs. Now all of those trees break dormancy at different times and generally speaking figs are the last ones that we typically see breaking dormancy for us here in Arizona. Now we're outside of the Phoenix area, so we're a bit cooler than they are in town. I know a lot of them are starting to see dormancy breaks on their fig trees, and I would imagine that we're not far away either. So we have several different varieties that we're gonna be talking about today. What I should clarify, this is the first time we'll be pruning these trees. All of the trees you see behind me here have been in the ground for less than a year. And most of these trees we actually started ourselves, either through cuttings or air layerings. This will be our first round of actually going through and taking material off of these trees. We purposely let them go through the entire growing season, spring through fall, until they go dormant, to ensure that we have as much growth above the ground, which drives root growth in the ground, which eventually leads to a healthy tree, and more importantly, a productive one. Now we're gonna be going over a couple different ways that you can approach pruning your fig trees. One thing, kind of an overall thing I wanna make sure I make clear, these fig trees grow very aggressively for us here in Arizona. So you're gonna see me being a little more aggressive than you might wanna be if you're in a cooler climate where you don't see as much growth, or if you have a fig tree that you're gonna be pruning that's in a pot. Under those circumstances, the tree won't be able to grow back quite as fast and it wouldn't be able to take quite as an aggressive pruning. We're gonna get started with the tree right behind me here, but before we do that, let me talk a little bit about the things we're gonna to need today. First thing would of course be hand protection. I am using sharp tools. I do make sure that I keep all of my tools nice and sharp, especially during pruning season. So a lot of sharp things around my hands. I prefer to have gloves on. Also, as I'm touching branches, especially when it comes to your fig trees, some of these are probably gonna have some sap in there. It can be kind of caustic, so I like to keep that off my hands as well. Next thing, of course, would be glasses. We don't have a whole lot of small limbs in here like we do with some of the other types of fruit trees here on the farm. But still, when you have these things kind of whipping through the air, the last thing you want is one smacking you in the eye. We have personal experience with that. Specifically, Lori does, and she has had one, actually this season had one hit her in the eye. So we do make sure that we're wearing eye protection, so I've got these safety glasses. Then of course, pruners. So these are my Corona pruners. This is my go-to tool when it comes to making any type of pruning cuts on the trees, either during pruning season or outside of that. It makes nice clean cuts on smaller branching, and these are very easy to find. Lastly would be a pair of loppers. You can see these I have here. We've used these for a couple years now. These are good for taking off limbs that are up to about an inch and a half or so. And for the most part, I think that's about all we're gonna have on these smaller fig trees, at least this season. Now what we'll do is we'll go through each one of these different varieties, talk a little bit about how we're gonna prune it and why. One of the keys with all of these and what you need to keep in mind is when it comes to fig trees, you can really kind of prune them however you want. They don't have a specific type or form that they need to follow in order to get good production. So we're gonna start here with this tree. This is a panache or tiger fig tree. This tree has a tendency to grow very vertically. You can kind of see that, how it's keeping kind of a tight canopy that's in this way. And it does grow at a moderate pace. Not quite as aggressive as some of our other trees, but it's fairly aggressive. A Couple things that I know we wanna do. The first thing like we do with any other tree, we do pull the wood chips back. We wanna see if we have any sucker growth. These fig trees, this one in particular was air layered from our old property, so it's not on rootstock, which means that it can push out like kind, so panache figs basically, out from the rootstock and the trunk. However, we like to try to keep that cleaned up so that we don't have any fruit on the ground. But I don't have any of that going on here. Next thing is I try to decide how I want this tree to look. So knowing that I am gonna want to have an open center and I need to encourage growth out, 
the first thing I'm gonna do is actually look at the center of the tree. You can see I've got a pretty good break right in here. Looking at the branching, I have branching going in just about every direction, which is good to see. However, I have some growth here in the middle that I do wanna take out. Now, typically I would probably take all of this out right here, so all of these three branches at once. However, I'm challenged a little bit with this tree because I need to make sure I'm giving shade to the center of the tree from the western sun. I have the western sun that's gonna be on this side, the south is behind me, so I wanna make sure that I'm protecting it from the southern exposure and also that western exposure. So as opposed to taking all three of these off, what I'm gonna do with my first cut here today is take this right off here and just lose these two branches that are going the same in the same direction as some of these others. When you make your cut, you wanna be careful you're not gonna be nicking the rest of the branches and you wanna make sure you're cutting at an angle. This will essentially be the center or open center of this particular fig tree. So I'm gonna cut that at an angle, just like that. Now the angle, as far as the importance of that, I don't know that it's extremely important here in Arizona because this, while I have some sap running down, will dry over very, very quickly. However, if you had any water or anything pooling in the top of that, uh, so if you get a lot of moisture in the air, you might have some issues with bacteria or fungus getting into the trunk of the tree. You wouldn't want that. And then of course we will come back when we paint the trunk We'll also paint this over as well once that has a chance to dry. What I'm gonna also look at is any branches that are going to cross. So I see here on this side, I have a branch that's coming out this direction here. I know that I do not wanna have this branch going into this one. Remember, all of these get bigger over time. This will continue to grow this way. This will continue to go this way. So they will cross. And as this get, continues to get larger, and as does this, these two will eventually start rubbing together. So I'm not gonna want that. Now, one thing I wanna have Lori come in closer and point out is where I made this cut. You can see right here, fig trees, like just about every other fruit, fruit tree, you have a collar, which is right here, and that starts to narrow into the branch that comes out this way. You can see I made that cut just past the collar. I probably could have gotten a little closer to the collar there, but it's close enough. What happens with these branches is this will start to die back towards the trunk, about to where the collar's at, and then that will heal over as this branch continues to grow. So that'll allow that dieback to occur without affecting the actual branch itself. One other thing that I'm looking at here is this particular branch. Now, I do have some protection from this tree on the western side because I kept this. This is a little bit too low for my taste, so I'm gonna go ahead and lose this branch here. Back to that collar, you can see I left the collar there. That will basically heal over flat as the trunk. So as I had mentioned with this particular variety, it does like to grow more vertical. So one of the things I'm gonna do, I have this branch here, it's a beautiful branch. However, I also have another kind of spur that's coming out this way, and I need to encourage outward growth. You'll see there how I have this branch that's shooting out. That's exactly what I want. I need this tree to go out that way. And bringing down the height of this tree while it's young isn't gonna hurt us either. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this branch off. All right, I like the way this looks. I've got some good outward growth here that I can help, I can train over time. I've got an open center, which is gonna help to ripen the fruit on the inside. I think this one's done. This is our Peter's honey fig tree. Now you can see it's already pretty tall. I'm just under six feet. This is taller than I am. So you can also see that this is definitely wanting to grow in. Now, part of that is because we had a cage on this when it was young and it's having to grow around that. But I've got a really, really low break on the trunk. So you can see this here. So this tree, I'm gonna have to treat a little differently. I do wanna encourage the outward growth and I, I definitely need to do that. And I also have some very, very low branching that I am gonna go ahead and take out. So I'm gonna do that first. We do wanna have open centers on these. This is a fairly young tree. So I am gonna get some outward growth. One other thing I know about this particular variety is it does have a tendency to grow very fast and also very vertical. So I need to be encouraging as much as I can branching to go out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take this branch off completely. I have this branch that's vertical. I already have a branch that's coming out that way and it is facing west. I wanna maintain this branch. At the same time, I don't need this vertical growth. 
And then I have the exact same thing here. I wanna bring some of this growth down because I know it's gonna grow aggressively up. I have another one that's coming out this way. This is pointing towards the south, as is this one. So I need to make a cut either on this side here or on this side. Because I already know it's gonna to try to grow as, as tall as it can, I'm gonna take it down as low as I can and still keep that outward growth. I'm gonna go ahead and keep this nub here. I think that's gonna look good and be ready for next season. This is our brown turkey fig. This one we took as a cutting from the old farm. And if you guys have watched our old pruning video, the fig pruning video, it's actually taken from that parent tree. So we know this is a very, very aggressively growing tree. Now, one of the things I should mention when it comes to these trees, we do have an issue with rabbits. So one of the things we wanna keep in mind is anything that's down low, we have had rabbits consume branches. We've watched it occur, <laughs> well, at least after the fact. So we need to make sure we're taking out low branching, but at the same time, we don't want it very tall and I need to be able to get in to harvest. One of the things about figs is the leaves themselves are quite caustic and make you pretty itchy. So we wanna make sure we can easily get in to harvest. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna start from the bottom, figure out a good breaking point on this tree, and then see how, how we go from there. I have a sucker right here, and I need to see how deep it is. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the dirt uh, or leave that cut exposed. I wanna make sure it hardens and heals over completely before we cover that back over. I have a branch here that's heading to the north. So I know I wanna keep that. I have another one here that's heading in the same direction to the west that I don't really need. Going to that panache, we had that panache at about a foot and a half or so. I think I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna go ahead and take this and make this the top of my trunk. We'll let that heal over really well and we'll have this trunk painted. Now I can see this really well. I've got my scaffolding in several different directions but evenly spaced. I'm gonna have plenty of access into the middle of the tree so I can do harvesting. I think this one's ready to go. This is our blackjack fig. We took this as a cutting from the old farm as well. Now this particular tree, you can see, has a tendency to be quite a bit lower to the ground. Bushes out very easily on its own. It doesn't get a whole lot of vertical growth, so I don't need to worry too much about that. The biggest concern here is the fact that I have a lot of branching down here in the middle. You can see I have a lot of things going on. Right here, I know that's rabbit damage, so that's a rabbit chewing on this particular branch, so that's gonna have to go because it's damaged. I have a lot of branching, that's some that's coming out of the ground here. I have them crossing all over the place. <laughs> I have one that's bent over crossing this way with some additional damage here. This is actually growing into the ground, which is a problem, so I need to get that off of there. So a lot of different branching. I definitely need to clean all this up. I also noticed that I don't have a lot of branching coming this direction. However, this is the north facing side of the tree. So if I have a bare spot in this tree that's gonna have sunlight on it, having it from the north side is just fine because I won't have a lot of direct sun on this particular part of the tree. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get to work, get all these crossing branches and all these low branches off this tree and then make a decision as far as <laughs> what we want this to look like when we're done. I have the height nice and low, which is what we want. I've cleaned up the middle for the most part. I don't have any growth coming this direction, which is heading up north, and I wanna to try to keep some balance to this tree while again still allowing access. I would normally probably take this branch off, but because it's the only north facing branch that I have, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it. I've already taken plenty of material off of this tree, so I think I'm gonna, gonna, gonna go ahead and leave this alone uh, for the rest of this year. This is our Kadota fig, another tree that we took as a uh, cutting from the old property. In fact, this is the very first cutting we propagated. This tree grows very aggressively. It also has a tendency to grow vertical, but at the same time, it can grow real well like a bush. So I already know that I'm gonna open up the center. I'm gonna take this middle branch out to do that and then really just kind of clean up the bottom 
and make sure I don't have any crossing branches. Normally what I would do, I would probably take more branching out. One issue that I have, I have the opening here that's in the middle. I need to keep that for this year. And I don't really wanna take any more branching off. That was an awful lot of material from this tree. Even though it's aggressive, I don't wanna to be too, too aggressive. Um, but I am gonna to need to leave this branch. And the reason being, this is the south facing. So the center of that is facing south. And this particular branch is gonna leaf out and it's gonna protect the center of that and help protect the middle of this tree. So I am gonna go ahead and pretty much just leave it as is for now and kind of see how this looks next year and just kind of take it from there. Last tree we're gonna be showing you today, this is our mission fig. So this particular tree is the only one that we're showing you today that we actually didn't take as a cutting ourselves. This one we purchased from Reed at RSI Growers. We know that he had this as a cutting that he started and I can see that right here, that was the original cutting and where the tree has grown since. Now what might be pretty apparent on camera and is easy to see here is we have multiple trunks that have since come out because obviously this can grow from the rootstock and clearly was doing that even in the pot. So now we do want to eventually get to a single trunk as best we can because it's just easier to manage. The problem is the only vertical trunk I have is this one and I need to make sure that I have enough material on this tree to drive further growth and possibly some slight production this year, although that's, that's not the goal. So I'm gonna have to take a multi-year approach if I go with this single trunk. But for this year, what I'm gonna do is just start taking out at least one of these other primary trunks and clean this up so I don't have any crossing branches. One of the things I wanna point out, the reason why I started with this particular trunk, you can see I've got a little bit of a nub here that I'll cut off in a moment, but you can see these two trunks basically were about a half an inch apart. There's no way those would have survived on going. So had to take that one off and this one eventually will be our main trunk. Instead of trying to prune this branch, these additional branches, I think I'm gonna go ahead and take this second trunk out here. That will leave us with basically these two trunks here for the year. I think I've taken enough material off of this tree. I will come back again. It's kind of a multi-year project for us with this particular tree. I've got some of that rootstock down at the bottom. I will take a saw and saw those down so that they're flat and then allow those to completely heal over before we cover those. Obviously gonna be dealing with some sucker growth down at the base, but I think long-term getting to just the one trunk, that's really what we needed to do with this particular tree. So we do have three more very small fig trees in the back that we're not gonna to touch. We just put those in the ground in the fall. They have a couple of short stubs that are turning into trunks. We don't wanna to touch those. We wanna make sure there's as much growth of branching at the top so that it starts to establish the roots. Give you a kind of a before and after of what these trees are gonna look like after this first round of heavy pruning to really start shaping the trees. Obviously now the whole idea is to eventually have production, but real curious to see what these are gonna look like once they break dormancy and they really start to take off come spring. Just wanna thank you for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section down below. Our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link down in the description. That's a free, painless way to help support the channel. If you start with that link, it doesn't matter what you buy, it helps us support us here. So just wanna thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you.